Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, we will be continuing the Flask Web Framework series. In our previous video, we had already seen how to do a face and eye detection using OpenCV. So this was the video which I uploaded in the morning itself on this day itself. And now in the evening, we are going to discuss how to do face recognition. So for this, we are going to use this amazing library called as face recognition. Here you will be able to see all the faces, detect the faces and probably with the names also you can actually come up with. You just need to have one or two images that is more than enough and then you'll be able to do it. So the output will look something like this. You're able to detect right now crash over here. If I also take some other images which I have actually trained, I hope you know this specific actor is Bradley Cooper, right? So uh, if you have seen Hangover, you'll be able to detect him too, right? So amazing now right now by default i've used this opencv window frame but now i'm just going to implement implement this entire thing in my flask web framework so please make sure that you watch this video till the end and please guys i'm very much near to 400k subscribers don't forget to subscribe the channel press the bell notification icon and let's target to complete this 400k subscribers within 15 days okay so let's proceed and i'm just going to minimize it right now this is very much simple. What I have actually done is that whatever implementation is basically given, this is also done with the help of OpenCV in just a frame box, like how this is basically coming, right? So just go over here, see this example code. The code is basically given away. You can just copy this, just change the names of the images. So I have done that same thing. I've just copied this entire code and here you can see one main.py, okay? Now, by default, what all things you need to change? Here I've actually created two folders. One is for Bradley and one is for Krish. You can find out crush image like this. You can see how bad the image quality is, but then also it will be able to determine. And then I have also taken Bradley image over here, uh, Bradley Cooper from hangover. So this particular image also will try to train and see that whether it will be able to detect or not. Perfect. Two images. Now, if I go back to main.py, all I have to do is that first of all, install this face recognition, right? Now in order to install this, the face recognition has also dependencies on different, different libraries, you know? So here I have made the list of all the libraries like you need to have CMake, you need to have Dlib, you know, because this requires internal compilation. It has to compile all these particular libraries. So please make sure that I will be giving this in the GitHub. Please make sure that you install all the dependency library and how to install it. It is very much simple. Just write pip install minus r requirement.txt. Now, after doing that, probably uh, you can actually start and executing this main.py. Now, before uh, executing this main.py, let's go through this specific code and let's try to understand what all changes you really need to do. Now, first of all, you require uh, face recognition, CV2, NumPy, NumPy uh, basically for creating the NumPy arrays. So if we go through the code over here, guys, first of all, we are capturing the frames from the webcam. So this is basically the code. You can see, get a reference to the webcam over here. The explanation is quite easily given. Then we load a sample image and learn how to recognize it. So what this face recognition library does is that, first of all, I need to give one training image. And here you can see that the training image is available in this particular path, you know, crush.jpg. Similarly for the, uh, for the Bradley over here, you can see this is basically the path that is Bradley slash Bradley.jpg, right? So here you also have this specific image. Perfect. So two image for the training part is available. Then uh, once we load this particular image, uh, this face recognition has a function called as face encodings. This will actually help uh, this particular library to uh, encode the image in short and get more details regarding that specific image. And all those information is basically stored in this crisp face encoding, right? And similarly, with the help of this Bradley, uh, Bradley image also, what we are doing, we are getting the most encoded features from that and stored in this particular variable. Perfect. So two important things. Once and, and does not require many images itself. It just required one, one images. Here you can see one image is given away, one image is given away. All the encoded features will be stored in this two variable. And this encoding features, we will be storing it in a list so that we can use these features in order to compare and verify whether the image from the new frame, like suppose uh, now if I on my webcam, right, like this, and whatever frame it is now taking, whether it will be able to compare it and it will be able to determine whether the images are same or not. So yes, uh, this is it uh, with respect to this. Let's go to the next code. So guys, once we get this particular encodings, I also need to know the real labels, right? So here we have defined the labels in the list that is crush and badly, and this will get mapped. We'll probably map this with this specific encodings only. Now let's go ahead. And here we are going to initialize this four variables that is face, location, encodings, face names, and process this frame. 
we are again going to read the frame that we are getting from the webcam do some resizing of this particular frame you know so that we will be able to capture and we will be able to understand where the faces are and then here you can see that whatever web frame whatever uh, the new frame that we are getting from the webcam we are getting the face locations from there and then we are also doing the encodings for those new uh, frames itself that are coming from the webcam and then we are going to compare this face encodings with the known face encodings that are present whether it matches to krish or badly suppose if matches to krish or badly it is going to go, uh, give you that uh, a square box we have to basically construct a square box saying that the image is present okay so that is what we are going to do over here is that i am going to basically use a for loop saying that for face encoding in face underscore encodings this will probably have two three four five six different different faces and we are just going to say that there is an inbuilt function to compare the faces now here where how we are comparing we are taking this face encoding and we are comparing with the known face encodings itself right so once we compare this right once we are comparing it and once we say matches right so this matches what it exactly it is here we'll be able to see and this internally how it is basically checking it is using a concept called as face distance so this is a function and it basically compares the face encoding and the new face encoding based on the euclidean distance to find out whether the comparison is almost similar or not and here it is going to compare this that is my known face encodings and face encodings it is pretty much simple and then we are basically going to get the matching index whichever gives us the mat best matching index we are going to use that particular index and display that specific name itself and after this uh, i think creating the tri rectangle and uh, this putting the text is pretty much simple which we have already discussed so finally when you run this code just right click run python file in terminal you will be able to get something like this so even you try multiple faces without any lag it will be able to determine both the faces and remember what is happening the training image that we gave over here you know that encoded and this new frame encoding is basically getting compared now when it gets compared you know so there it will basically try to find out whether which index is basically matching whether krish or bradley or whether both and based on that that frames are getting created like you see over here now this is the basic implementation now probably i can close this close this webcam frames or probably this particular uh, cv2 frame itself where my face is getting detected but how should i integrate this with my browser that is the main question over there right so let's go back over here and if you remember guys uh, this is basically the code with respect to displaying the web streaming you know so if i open this yes let me just keep it over here so that you'll be able to see my face at least so over here you'll be able to see that this specific code that you are actually seeing over here this code is basically to read the frame and display in the browser this is what we discussed in our previous video if you want to check out just go and check out the tutorial 7th and 8th right that is what we did we read that particular frame and we have encoded this into bytes and we are displaying it right and that is what the reason we have why we have created this index.html also so if you go over here this is the index.html and this is basically calling the video feed and this video feed is basically calling this generated frames function and this generated frames are basically just displaying this particular frames and displaying it in the web browser now what changes should i be actually bringing to this whatever things we have written over here guys whatever things we have actually written or use this particular code i just have to include before this in the else block everything i have to include okay and then automatically i will be getting the frames after creating the square box so after all this gets executed this cv2 rectangles put text will get executed instead of writing this particular code i will just be integrating this code that's it right only that that is the thing that is required and automatically it will start working in the browser so let me do one thing let me copy and paste the entire code over here okay so here now you will be able to see we have again started with flask cap and uh, this is basically using krish.jpg bradley fine these all are there now here you see in the else block i have included the entire code the same code that what we have discussed in main.py and then it is basically doing the encoding it is doing the two bytes and it is basically displaying the frame that's it only that is the change that is basically required guys again i will be providing you this entire thing but before that let me just close this because i don't require this one let's now run it in the browser so i have closed it now now i'm just going to uh, run this particular current file or run the python file in terminal now here you will be able to see that once it gets executed 
uh, it will now open in a browser and it will be able to determine my face or whatever images that I'm actually trying to bring right now here you'll be able to then we are we are planning to do this in the flask web right plus flask web framework so probably now you'll be able to see now you'll be getting the URL with the IP address and here it is and it is open now this is pr pretty much good right now here you can see that you will be able to see my face right pretty much simple right uh, this is how it works right and uh, probably if I try with some other images also let's see now here you can see Bradley Bradley is also being determined right so this is it right this is what you really have to learn from this and face recognition is an amazing library altogether because training time will not take place much you know it will be very much quickly you will be able to do it and that is the thing that I really wanted to show you how you can integrate along with the flask web app now many people are questions are asking that Krish how do we deploy this in Heroku right this is the question and probably I'll also try to show a video in as we go ahead because we have to use something called a socket IO uh, which I'm actually exploring and probably in a very soon uh, like in a very less period of time I'll try to upload the next video also so I hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscribe I'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one dog bye bye